Welcome to this tutorial about accessing open data. My name is Ralph Cochran, and I've also got Philip Rustermeyer on the line, our resident hacker and coding expert from AppChallenge.net. Philip, welcome. Thank you, Ralph. Hi. Um, so we're going to talk today about a new data set that we've made available. Uh, this is the European Quality of Life Survey. And just to tell you a little bit about it, it's a survey that takes place uh, roughly every five years across Europe. So it gives you a very good view of perhaps how you compare to people uh, across the rest of Europe. And for those of you who are not that familiar with the European Union and the spread of the EU, it's grown a lot since this survey began. So one of the things to be careful of is that the original survey had a smaller number of countries than we do now. Um, we're now up to 28 member countries. And you'll also find some additional countries as well, such as Turkey and Iceland, who are in the candidate process. So that means they're being considered um, for membership at some point in the future. And that makes for really interesting comparisons between uh, perhaps countries like my own native uh, United Kingdom. Philip is in Germany. You can compare the same sorts of results with people in Poland or in Turkey or in uh, Bulgaria and see how our lives compare or perhaps differ. And that's some of the things that we want to bring out in this app challenge. So the first issue that you'll face is registering with the Open Data API. And on screen at the moment, you can see the UK Data Service API. Uh, the URL is ukdataservice.3scale.net, and that's linked from our own competition website um, as well. So Philip, if, uh, if I can play the role of a not very good developer, which is quite accurate, actually, um, what do I need to do? So this is where you can sign up for an API key, which is what you need um, to do really anything with the API at all, because before you do any queries, you need to um, identify yourself to the API so they know who you are. So um, you can do that by just going to this page, which also has um, all the documentation you'll need to access the API later. So uh, at first, you just go, go to the main page, and there's a big blue button at the bottom. Ah, so that's, says, that's where I sign up. Literally, as it says, that's where I can get this API key, which is kind of like my unique code that I need to use within my application. Is that right? That's correct, exactly. If you're, if you're doing one million queries a day, they probably come calling. Um, so that's that's their way of, of ensuring that, that it's fair for everyone. Okay. So we'll sign up for a key now, and then uh, we'll go to that process. So at first, you have to put in an organizational group name. We'll just say maybe app builds. Oh, sorry. So this could be the name of my application. It, it, it can. It's just an arbitrary. Name yeah, basically. exactly. Exactly. It's uh, your application, or maybe your company, or maybe just your name. It's really not not that important. Um, then you put in your username. And some sort of password. Um, I'll just do a, a very cheap one. Okay, they don't take cheap ones. Um, okay. So that's a good thing. We're just encouraging. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't really. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't really use uh, weak passwords um, for API keys because uh, if someone can steal your key, they can uh, use your key to, you know, access this stuff, and uh, you'll get the bill for it, or at least the the angry emails. Actually, it's probably a good time as well to say whilst you're doing that that um, you can download this entire data set from the UK Data Service website um, and we'll post that link on our website. So if you wanted all of the data in one go, um, you can do that as well. But this is a nicer programmatic way of accessing the data. So it looks like um, you've got a confirmation email address somewhere, Philip. Yeah, let's just check it. I've already opened it in some tab. That's it. Great. So you just click the link, and then you have to log in. 
So this is just confirming that you are a real person, that it's not spam. Um, so you do that. And then I'm logged in, and they've already um, put up an app for me and given me a key, um, which I'm going to use for these tutorials and um, deactivate later, because I don't need it anymore. So um, if you want a key, please sign up for your own key. Um, and you should you should make a note of that, shouldn't you? I always copy and paste them into Notepad or somewhere so that I know. Um, yeah, you can actually. Happens. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you can actually um, just get it from this web page. I'll, I'll only need it, it two or three times uh, when I'm, you know, setting up the app. Um, and actually, what's nice here is if you go to the documentation, um, you'll see all this stuff, and it, it'll actually automatically uh, put in your API key when you're trying stuff out. So, um, yeah, you should copy it, but um, while you're exploring the documentation, it'll actually copy it for you, which is a nice feature. 